Blessed be the name of our God. Once again, we are here, one more weekend, in the presence of our God. We greet all with the peace of the Lord Jesus. And I invite the ones that are able to stand, and also the ones that are following us through the media, if you want, in reverence to the Word of God, we're going to open our Bibles in the book of Psalms, chapter 16. Psalms, chapter 16. Amen. It will be projected. The word of God says as follows. Preserve me, O God, for in you do I put my trust. My soul, O my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness extends not to you, but to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their, their drink offerings of blood will I, offer, I will not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines are falling to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a, go a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. The church may be seated. Brethren, I like to speak about David, the King David, because the, the great King David, he is a notable man. Bible teaches teaches that in many circumstances and experiences with David and in all the things that David did not sin against God he is for us an example and he represents the person of Jesus symbolically. We don't need to get into like fine details. We didn't have, have even time to do that. But briefly, some aspects of David's life we make us to remember David's life. Some circumstances. For example, David, certain occasion, he desired to be in Jerusalem. He was not there before, in, back then. So he, he loved to be in the temple, at the temple, with the church, praying. And he always seek for God's counsels. He never done anything, went to the war, for example. Uh, by impulse. 
and he waited on the Lord. So the, when the Lord said to him, you can go, then he, he went. So David, for us, is something notable. Since his childhood or the youth phase of his life, he was chosen to reign upon Israel. He was set aside, anointed by God, chosen among many. He was a man set aside by God to be the king of Israel. And before his adulthood, he demonstrated that he was committed before God. Uh, his function before he turned himself to himself into a soldier or a king, he was a shepherd. So that's why we believe that Jesus was revealed in David's symbolically in the Old Testament. So in, in his very young age, he, he faced a great enemy. He was tall, gigantic. So who can tell us the name of this soldier, adversary of Israel? Goliath. So the story of the fight, the, the, the combat between David and Goliath, the Bible describes a very uneven battle. He was a shepherd. And even though he went and he confronted Goliath, he was not armored with the, the armor of the soldiers from back then. But he used weapons that he knew and he used in his quotidian. This battle, if we, if we analyze this experience, we might think he gonna be bit. He gonna lose the the direction from his house, but the Bible says that he was running against the the Goliath. So this shows Jesus that runs to conquer in favor of the church. He goes to rescue the loss. So whoever loses that battle, whoever lost that battle back then, will be putting an end for the war, and whoever loses will be serving the other land, the other nation. They will be slaves. So David, when he was facing the giant Goliath, he showed something very important. I'll go I'll encounter you and I'll go against you in the name of the Lord of the hosts. He was not trusting himself. He's not, he was not trusting his knowledge or his experience, but he was moved by the Holy Spirit of God. And we know that David, the, the, the end, David conquered. And he killed the giant, and the name of our God was glorified. Later on, when he was king already, one of his children started to raise against him to steal the, the, the reign, the kingdom. And he's, he was not supposed to follow. the hierarchy and he uh, this one was the one humanly by the the logic he was but god has different plans and as i mentioned before david always asked god for his opinions so this son of david make a plot against david to steal the kingdom so David listened to one of the, the mighty men, one of the wise women, uh, men that used to counsel David. And he called the son of David, Absalom, 
and says, listen, your father is a very wise man. It's a man of, of victories. Be careful. So this son of David was imba uh, very embarrassed. So David have won several battles and wars. Bible don't mention any disease of David. There is no battle that David decided to go that he didn't conquer. Until now, David in Israel is honored. All the the instruments of war, the, the airplanes, the aircrafts, they have a symbol that reminds the King David. He was known for his courageousness. He had like very mighty armies and everybody respected him around the nation of Israel. Everybody around the nations, all the other people, all the all the nations also respected him, and they fear him. And we know, even today, a very small country as Israel is, God always provides blessings and protection and deliverances for these people. We are not here to preach nothing about. Uh, Israel politically or geographically but we have the word of God and the scriptures and what the Lord does through the word so we are using David as an example because he's a noble noble man not for his endeavors and I ask where was the power of David it was in his army, his soldiers, the 37 valiants, mighty men that go after anything and everything to protect him, to defend him. It was his power in this, in the money, precious stones, the knowledge. No. David, the word of God doesn't say that David used that. But he expresses what he feels about God. In this psalm, for example, he said clearly, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup. So he, he tried to put in words what he feels about the Lord as his servant. Everything I have, whatever I have, belongs to you. It's impressive. A king talks, talking about that, talking like that. Imagine someone of authority, a president or a leader, recognizing that he's nothing without God. And David was like that. He was glad to express that he was nothing without God. You are the portion of my inheritance. You are my, my cup. Besides the, the heritage and everything that he received from the Lord, all the power, all the leadership, the fame, and reputation, he expects everything and anything from God. You are my cup. When he, say, when he talks about the cup, it's something very common back then. The cup or the calyx, it was used to drink wine and it was very custom to, when you receive someone in your house, a visitor, when you wanted to share your feelings, your something particular, your intimacy. 
and to have that person, that visitor, as someone that you trust, that you feel pleasant to, to have that person there. When you're at the table, having dinner, supper, any meal, you, you used to take your cup and you offer to the visitor. This action, this gesture, to share your cup with someone not part of your family, it was a visitor, but starting in that moment, that person will be connected. It will have a commitment between that person and the, the, the visitor. Whatever is yours is mine, whatever is mine is yours. Your fight will be my fight. My victories will be your victories. So we are connected now. We are partners for life. Everything I have, I will expect you helping me and you can be sure I will help you. So David was saying to the Lord, you are like that to me. My life belongs to you. My heart is yours. My desire now is to be with you at the table. I wanted to listen to your to advices. I want to talk to you knowing that you're going to listen to my sorrows and struggles. I need you that you open a door, a healing, a solution. This is what David was saying. Lord, you are my everything. I trust you. I hope in you. My hope is in you. You are the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. You maintain my destiny. The destiny of David was in God's hands. He did not trust completely in any man, even the valiant, the mighty man. He trusted a certain point, but he trusted totally on the Lord. And if he needs to choose, I have two doors. One is my name, my reputation, my fame. My endeavors, the nation, everything I have conquered. I have shown who I am. And the other door, I have the Lord, the God of Israel. The way that he's talking in the Psalms, David will say, I knew everything and I wanted to be in your presence. And this is what God expects from his servants. God doesn't want a man to neglect of anything and just rely on the, the circumstances of the world. But he desires us to be put in, exercise our faith because above everything is the, a God of miracles. All you need is to listen to the voice of the Lord. You don't need to like ask for details, but if you say go, you go. And if you say stay still, do not be afraid, I'm with you. That's enough. This is sufficient to us. And this is what David was saying and that we are mentioning tonight. And this is what we need to say to God, Lord, I wanted to be in your presence. I am not here tonight just for the, the materialistic blessing or the, the secular solution. That, that will make David a different man. And this is what pleases God. And that's why the Bible says that God says, I found David a man according to my heart. Imagine listening, God saying to you, Something like that. And the Bible confirms that he was a man according to God. Everything he does, when he didn't sin, he was a man according to God's heart. The lines falls in beautiful places. His experience before the Lord, 
amadurecimento, tempo de vida, tempo, tempo de, 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 tempo de aprendizado. He talks about his experience, the time. I know that several people don't like to, to talk about the, the wrinkles, but Lord, my wrinkles make me think that I chose the best portion is to be in your presence. I have matured in your presence, O oh Lord. I want, O oh Lord, to learn more and more. This is what David was saying. This is what God has for us. This is what the Lord wants us to to chose to choose and God wants us to go to the direction that is toward him. Everything David conquered one day will pass. The Bible says men will pass, the world will pass, the the conquering will pass, the victories. Any leader Uh, we still talking about David, yes, but many don't even know about David. And he knew that one day he will be passed. His name will be forgotten, but not the name of our God. That's why David expected to be in the presence of God, because he knew that in the presence of the Lord, He will reach salvation for his soul. He says, you are the portion of my inheritance. David was talking about what, what was in the deep of his heart, not a physical pleading, but something related to the eternity. And this was the main concern in David's mind. He knew that everything will pass away, but the intimacy that he had with God will last forever. And this is the way that he, he matured, he advanced, knowing the Lord, listening to the voice of the Lord, having experiences with him, praying to him. I can imagine David in the worst moments of his life when he was by himself in the palace, in his hidden place. He used to pray a lot. And I can, I can imagine him kneeling down, crying before the Lord. This is something beautiful. Like many of us, you and the Lord, by yourself, living your, your, your struggles and, and trials. But in the moment that you recognize the power and the sovereignty of the Lord, when you understand that you are nobody, and you know that there is a God that is above everything, this is the moment that calls God's attention and this touches the heart of God and he extends the staff towards to you and he is the God above all gods and when he listens to your prayer to your heart he ordained your victory that's why David was so victorious not because he had anything in himself He was victorious because he had a God that was in control of everything. And now the church, not the Maranatha institution or any other church per se, but a church that has no name called church, uh, Faithful Church, a church that is made of men and women, the mighty men in the presence of the Lord, the victorious people because they listen to the voice of the Lord. And they plead for help. They cry for help. In the moment of trials and struggles, in the moment of solitude and anguishing, they knock on the door and they get to close to the altar. They don't run to anything that is human or something that passes. But our, our experiences, our living, the way that we live is like that. In the moment of trials and difficulties, We kneel down before God's presence and He heard our prayers. This is our experience, like David. There is no secret formula. Yes, we do have our struggles. 
as any, anybody else. Not because we are believers, we are exempt of diseases or struggles, financial trials. David also went through all that. But in all those, the Lord has provided the victory for his people. We shall not want God's help because we have learned how to seek for the solution and to whom we will run to receive the, the aid that we need. The God of Israel, our God, the love of our souls. In your presence, there is abundance of richness. In your right hands, there is victory. I shall not be moved. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. Always conducting us, guiding us, taking us to, allowing us to, to be standing still in the presence of the Lord. May the Lord bless us. Let's sing a song.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brethren, we all have options. We make choices. We take choices. And tonight, the Son of God can teach you how to choose right to get the portion, which is to be dependent of God. We have our life, our secular life, our work, our study. Everything's okay. You might be going through a moment of abundance or you might be struggling. That for God is irrelevant. But moments like a man choose to serve God, moments like that are remarkable for the heart and the mind of the man. As for moments like that defines your spiritual character. So we wish that tonight you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and you choose to be always in the presence of the Lord. No matter what, independent of what happens to you, know that God is alive. Let's stand and let's have a word of praise to the Lord. God, we bless your name. We glorify your holy name for your presence among us, for the wonderful portion. We thank you as you have chosen us first. We adore your holy name as for the Lord has shown us your salvation daily and how good it is to be part of the, whole, the work of the Holy Spirit. Receive, O oh Lord, our adoration our praise. This service is an expression that we have. It's a moment to say we love to be in your house. You are the portion of our lives. You are, you are our everything. And tonight we, we adore you, sing songs to your Holy Spirit for all the things that you have done for us for our prayers being heard, for the doors being opened, and as they can continue going open, we, we adore you for your help continuously. And we know by faith that you never forsake us. Take us in your presence. Dismiss us from your house and keep talking to us, our needed heart and the ones that came seeking for answers Stretch out your hands, O Lord, and give the victories. This is our pray, thankfully, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in your name we say that the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We are approaching the closing of our service. And we would like to thank you that came tonight and gave us the honor of your presence and the ones that are following us through the media. And we are always at your service, at your need to help, to pray, and to do whatever is in our reach to help one another. This is the function of the church and this has been our experience. We depend on the Lord. So you are welcome here. Our next service is tomorrow. Will be tomorrow online 9 a.m. and tomorrow night 7.30 we have a presential service again here to all peace of the Lord Jesus Christ.